Okay, Darren here, Auto Fetish Detail, best auto detailing tips.com. Today I specifically want to talk about upholstery cleaning and this particular car. It's a Mazda 3 Series uh, hatchback, station wagon, doesn't matter. Point is, is it is all about the material. So, within any given car, you have a vast array of materials. That's uh, a glorified way of saying there's lots of many materials to deal with. You've got vinyls, you've got cloth, you've got synthetic cloth, you've got carpeting, floor mats, uh, hard plastics, coated plastics, rubberized plastics. Point is, is there's lots of materials. Now you don't have to overcomplicate things. Now if you wanted to, you could fill your garage with a specialized cleaner for each material. For example, they will have special leather cleaners, they will have special carpet upholstery cleaners, uh, plastic cleaners, vinyl cleaners. But the reality is, is it can be much more simplified than that. And that's where we have what's called an all-purpose cleaner. Now as a general rule, I like this product by Meguiar's. It's a, what's called an APC, which stands for All Purpose Cleaner. APC is a, what's it called, acronym, I believe. Uh, anyhow, All Purpose Cleaner. This is a concentrate. Uh, if you can see, it's green. Now on my website, if you go there, because uh, I'm going to link this to a page on my website, it will be very green if you click on that link if you want to get some yourself, which I recommend. This is one of the products that if I had to live with like a single one or two product, this would be one of them. Um, it's an all-purpose cleaner, it's a concentrate, which means that you can custom blend it. Now on the back, there is dilution ratios, which means depending upon the level of clean, or I should say dirt, that you're dealing with will determine the ratio in which you mix this with water. Like for example, a four to one ratio means that you use four parts water, one part cleaning solution. So if you wanna mix a gallon, like let's say this gallon, you were gonna mix it four to one, that would mean that this, you would mix this with four gallons of water with one gallon of all-purpose cleaner, which would net you a five gallon drum or container of cleaning solution. So it's cool in that based on what you're trying to tackle, the type of dirt, uh, you can custom blend it for that purpose. So that's one of the uh, great benefits. Uh, Meguiar's is a trusted name. Um, this is part of their detail line, which means that as professional detailers, we tend to go through a lot of products. So it does come in a gallon size. Now you may consider that overkill in your world because you may be a driveway detailer, you may just have one car to clean, but the good news is, is because it's an all-purpose cleaner, it has so many uses for it, whether it's your car, the house, whatever. Uh, you can use it on engines, you can use it on carpeting, on fabric, cloth, uh, actually those words I realize are interchangeable and depend upon your definition. Uh, but the point is, is it's all purpose cleaner. There's very few materials within a car that you would have to worry about getting this on. The only exception that I can even begin to think of is maybe on the gauges. They've got the clear plastic lens. Maybe it might discolor that or create a drying out effect. I don't know. I don't spray it on those things. Point is, is it can be used on many materials. Now what I want to demonstrate specifically with this car is this synthetic material is not a typical cloth. Like with carpeting, you have what's called a nap. Now imagine carpeting. It's got all the individual fibers that stick up like this, okay? So the dirt really, unless it's a liquid spill that spills down into the base of the material and so forth, the dirt's really going to be limited to the top parts of the fiber. That's the good news. It's much easier to clean. 
Now the problem with this type of material is that it's a synthetic and it's a tight weave. So it's like this. And it's, so it's like cleaning a material that's got these tight weaves where it's all interconnected very tightly. So imagine if you had, I'll use this example, imagine if you had your fingers, your hands that are very dirty, grease, dirt, whatever, and you had to clean them under the sink of running water like this, like normal, and you've got your solution and you're able to touch the individual fingers and get in between there and clean. Now imagine those same dirty hands, but now they're dirty and now you interlock them like that and now you hold your hand underneath the water and you let's say you had a third hand that you could scrub this hand with in fact I'll get my scrub brush and let's say I had a tight closed fist and I'm now scrubbing this hand and I'm trying to get it clean but all the dirt is trapped in between that tight weave it is virtually impossible and that's why this material is so difficult to get clean versus other material seeding that has a very uh, fine or tight uh, nap but nonetheless there is a nap to it meaning there's individual fibers so I just want to demonstrate that on this type of material a it's very difficult B what I recommend to people is don't ever get it dirty that way you never have to try to get it clean but with that there is some tricks that you can use so I have my cleaning solution which is the all-purpose cleaner it's diluted down so it doesn't look green anyways uh, it's very straightforward uh, I've already pre vacuumed this now as a rule I prefer microfiber cloths because they're so absorbent the material is far superior than like a terry cloth towel. For one, a terry cloth towel will leave lint as you mop it up because what you're doing is it's simply you're spraying, you're scrubbing, and you are mopping it up or wiping it up like this. Now, this is a relatively new car it only has 12,000 miles on it this is the passenger seat so there's not a whole lot of dirt in fact I, I specifically got this white cloth to show you uh, if indeed any dirt came up which virtually a little bit but hardly any but the point is is when you're cleaning this type of material a lot of people will uh, find it uh, confusing or complicated and won't want to deal with it because they think oh I've got to go rent a carpet extractor or a hot water extractor one of those types of equipment that you would use on the carpeting on the inside of your house that's just not the case now what we're dealing with or what most of you be, will be dealing with is what I will call superficial dirt which means it's dirt that's tracked into the car from your body or it's uh, dry material, maybe food, that type of stuff. Occasionally you'll have a spill, a liquid spill. Now those are always more difficult because the liquid spill will, what's called a wicking phenomenon, which means that it spreads into other areas. So a spill is much more difficult to contend with or deal with or clean up. So right now, I'm just talking about superficial dirt, body oils um, that get on the seat, and it's all at the top surface. So it's as simple as, like I said, you spray, get your scrub brush, you scrub, and you mop up. And like I said, I prefer a microfiber cloth. Now this all-purpose cleaner can be used on hard plastics, uh, soft plastics, rubberized materials, cloth in its many forms. Now this center piece of the seat is different, uh, is a different configuration, a different color also than the side bolsters. This is, it's all synthetic. There might be a little bit of natural fibers which would be cotton, uh, but I can almost guarantee this is a hundred percent synthetic 
um, that makes it even that much more difficult to clean, believe it or not. So when it comes to these materials, uh, the best bet, don't get them dirty. But that's just not reality for most people. Uh, the good news for this car owner is that it's black, so it's gonna hide the dirt uh, versus like a light tan or light gray. Um, so part of the lesson of this video is to not have unrealistic expectations. So if, you've, if you have this type of seating and, and you've allowed it to get excessively dirty, yes, these cleaners are great, and for heavy duty dirt, I go to this which is called a super degreaser. Now, yes, super degreaser would suggest that it's made for like engines and degreasing engines. Yes, it is, but it's also very safe for all types of materials. And it's a concentrate, so once again, I dilute this down to specific needs. But, it, but because it's able to cut grease and oils a little bit better than this all-purpose cleaner, there's many times that I will have to use this on the interior of cars so I can basically cut to the chase. In other words, uh, I may have to use this cleaner four or five times. Well, with this one, I may be able to do it in one or two times. So I keep both cleaners with me uh, when I'm doing virtually any car so I can pick and choose regardless of the material uh, it will all be predicated upon how much dirt I'm trying to clean. So as a rule, when it comes to upholstery cleaning or cleaning in general, you simply spray, scrub, and mop up or wipe up. Now, as a rule also, it's much better to do repeat applications of light uh, sprays, mop it up, and then you keep doing that over and over again until you have achieved the desired results. Rather than doing one heavy application where you oversaturate the material and you think you're just gonna get all the dirt in one pass. It's just not realistic. Uh, so it's better to do light, repeated applications until you've achieved the desired results. Now you could, uh, in certain cases use one of these little machines uh, this is a little what's this called a little green machine by Bissell I also keep one of these uh, instead of spending like two thousand dollars on the heavy carpet extractors which is a rule I don't have to use anyways I keep one of those in the event that there is a spill because those are a little more effective at cleaning up spills see what happens is liquid it, it spills into the material and it does what's called a wicking sensation or a wicking phenomenon where it, that's what allows you like a paper towel. If you were to put a paper towel on a liquid spill on the countertop, you put the paper towel and you can see the uh, liquid uh, go into the, uh, the surrounding area. It, it literally wicks it up or it soaks it up. So the problem when you get a spill on your fabric inside your car is it will wick into all these other areas. So in trying to get it, it's almost impossible to extract all that liquid which is wicked down into or soaked down into all the materials. You're gonna have to do it over and over again. So if you ever do get one of those spills, chances are if you do it with this method, you spray it, you scrub it and you mop it up, you're gonna have to do it many times and then allow it to dry completely. Usually there will be a ring left after it dries completely. Well, you're gonna have to go back over that area. The sun is now getting in my eyes. You're gonna have to go back over that area after it dries and then re-clean the area and, and try to clean away that residual ring effect. So, with that said, I just want to make a special video in dealing with this tight fabric is one, have realistic expectations, which is it's very difficult to deal with. Even as a professional with years and years of experience, it's just a nightmare. So the best bet is, is don't get it dirty. 
use a cloth use a towel to sit on something don't don't take drinks in your car that are colored uh, don't take drinks as a rule because accidents are just that they're accidents they're not planned for so you think you're being safe but that eventually something's gonna happen and it's gonna spill coffee tea sodas whatever so they're just a miserable to deal with they look cool and they become very popular in what I call entry-level cars because the material is basically cheap to make and it's relatively durable as far as wearing out but the problem is is they are miserable to clean so have realistic expectations these two cleaners I highly recommend uh, light repeated applications versus one heavy saturated application um, and it's, it's pretty straightforward from there and uh, but with when it comes to cleaning anything whether it's a hard door panel or whatever it's spray scrub mop up there's different types of tools you can use from a scrub brush to a toothbrush to even a dusting brush if I'm getting in nooks and crannies I will get this wet and agitate the area uh, break up the dirt and then mop it up with my microfiber okay did we learn something today I hope so folks so I'll create a link to my website if you want to get some of these products that helps support my efforts so I can make more of these instructional videos that hopefully will get you what you want which is a cleaner car a detailed car and you can learn uh, the tricks for lack of a better word that I actually use in my professional world of auto detailing okay we'll see you on the other side